Okay, let's start where every SCM game should start, and that is with terrain analysis. So this map is a fairly decent sized town as far as combat mission is concerned, in a valley between two ridges. On the left, we have this Overlook Ridge, which also has a minor victory point location. And on the right, we have a Cemetery Ridge, which also has a minor victory point location. Both sides have three setup zones, uh, one on the far left, one on the main road, and one on the far right. Uh, there's four total uh, victory locations besides those two ridges. There's the whole town center has is a minor victory location, and then uh, there's a small municipal building that is a major uh, victory location. Now the key piece of terrain on this map is this overlook ridge. If any one side can control this ridge, they'll have uh, concealed the visibility of the entire town and should be able to dominate the rest of the map. As you can see, it's a pretty high ridge with, with lots of cover. And on the far side, the the cemetery ridge has not as much cover, uh, but it has a covered approach on his side of the map. Mine's much more open, my side of the cemetery ridge. So this is a key t piece of terrain uh, that I, I think that he's going to use uh, to try to push, maybe push me off the cemetery ridge, get visibility to my side of the town. So I did set up a, a TRP on the back side of these woods. The other key piece of terrain on this map is this hill. This is actually the, the highest elevated spot on the map. And it doesn't have great visibility to the town, but it has really good visibility to uh, cemetery Ridge and anything that's happening on on this little farmland area. Unfortunately for Hapless, which I did not know this until after we chose sides, my side has much, much uh, better access to the victory locations. So not only are they slightly closer to my starting positions, which matters a lot for the town and the, the major victory location, but my road is a straight path. His has to go around some curves. I also have a great hold down position. And I'm going to get to force selection in a second, but I wasn't even going to take an Abrams until I saw this spot and I decided that I had to have an Abrams just for here just to cover my approach. But that's not even the, the worst part of the map for Hapless. The worst part is this, I don't even know what it's called, I need to go in the scenario editor and find out, but these fields, these bushes here, they are extremely slow for the vehicles to drive over. And all of Hapless's deployment zone <laughs> is stuck behind these in a way that mine is not. So this is really going to slow him down uh, getting to the overlook, which I could have beaten there anyways, but he has this huge patch of uh, brush, thick underbrush, I guess. Uh, if he tries to avoid it, then he's exposed. Um, he has the road here, which he can avoid it there. But like I said, I, I beat him to the town. And then on this side, he'll deploy back here in this corner. And again, with this thick 
a brush and it's all throughout the back side of this map it really limits the speed at which you can maneuver back here it's, uh, like I said it's not it's not fair at all for uh, the player on this side and unfortunately for him that's the side he got it was not not planned but that's is what happened so what is my plan then well since he is at such a disadvantage I'm going to rush I'm going to uh, rush the overlook ridge go to the far side of the objective I'm going to rush the far side of the major objective the municipal building and I'm going to rush with a small holding force the uh, reverse slope of the cemetery ridge. I'm also going to just hoof a few few teams up to the top of that uh, big mountain on the, the back side of mine. And so after I rush and establish uh, positions across uh, the map, I have a pre planned 120 millimeter. Uh, barrage coming in uh, to the reverse slope of his overlook ridge and then I'm going to uh, provide some covering fire from the town and hopefully I'll kick him out of those woods and I think if I can do that if I can hold these woods uh, I should be able to secure a victory because I will get all the points for the overlook location. I'll have such good visibility. I do not think he'll be able to push me out of the major victory location. And so if I take those two victory point places and push the other two uh, and do a few more casualties than he does to me, I should be able to win. So that is the plan. So after doing the terrain analysis and deciding on a plan, the next step is to pick a force that I think can accomplish that plan. We had only one force restriction and that was only one TRP allowed. And then we also have a pre-planned bombardment rest restriction of only one pre-planned bombardment. So what I did is I took, uh, actually I actually have three companies, but they are all weakened companies. Three normal rifle companies would have uh, 27 squads. I have three companies and 13 squads. A company is a striker, a rifles company. Uh, I have also has an elite XO team and a crack sniper team. Uh, and they're two platoons, both have two squads. Uh, one squad's a vet, one squad's green. I kept the attached machine guns, the Ford Observer, and I kept one of the strikers, the, the grenade launcher striker. The B Company is also a striker's a rifle company. He also has uh, an elite XO team, and I'm, I'm using these XO teams as uh, javelin teams. I'm going to give them javelins I steal out of the the striker and the Bradleys. Uh, I got another uh, crack sniper team. Each of these platoons only have one squad the attached MGs and the Ford Observer. I do have a engineering platoon with two squads and a man pads platoon with two stinger teams. I got these with the expectation that they could knock drones out of the sky but that is not the case which proved to be a very painful for me. A C Company is a, a Bradley rifle company. Grabbed another Elite XO team. This first platoon has two squads, a crack and a vet squad. This platoon is gonna is my my last reserve. Uh, saving him for the for the key moment of the battle. Took the Ford Observer and two Bradleys. Uh, the second uh, rifle platoon is three squads and also two Bradleys. I also got the uh, Abrams with the APS system. I got a 120 mil millimeter mortar, which I'm going to use for the pre-planned bombardment. And I got two 
81 millimeter mortar teams and that's why I have these five FOs because I, I want to be spread out around the map and, and be able to use the uh, the mortars to suppress any 